So Ginger's a little antsy right now. Um, so the reason Ginger is a broodmare is because she was injured at seven months. So she has a little anxiety about, you know, being like sedated and having vet work done to her just because she had so much of it done to her from like such an early stage in life. And we had to, she had to have surgery and had to have all kinds of stuff done to her. So um, she is now gonna be a broodmare. And so today is the first day she's ever gonna be bred. And I'm trying to just let her like chill out before I go take her um, to the cross ties and let her get sleepy. Um, but we're excited. We're breeding her to a stallion named Cool Breeze, who is actually a local stallion. So he's also in Tennessee. And the same clinic that we use for all of our reproductive work and for all of our normal vet work is also the, the clinic that stands him, meaning during breeding season, he stays with them. They collect him three days a week and they ship out all of his semen. So it was nice that uh, my vet was actually just able to bring it with him today. So we're gonna go ahead, let her get sleepy. You're okay. She was so nice and then she saw the shot and then now she's upset again. But we're gonna take her into the cross ties and let her just chill out for a minute before we start because we don't want her all, all upset when he's putting his arm up there. Here. You okay? Anticipation is worse than right, the stick. Right, right. Explain twitching to someone. Well, it releases endorphins when you put the twitch on, and those endorphins calm them down. Calm them down. Um, personally, I think it just gives them something else to, to think, think about. about. But I mean, when you think about it, like you pull your lip, it doesn't really like hurt. Like it's. I always think of that movie, Major Pain. Did you ever watch that? Mm -mm. It was probably before my time, you know. This, this little kid gets, this little kid gets hurt, and um, the guy's he like hurts his leg or something, and then guy looks at him and goes, "You want me to take your mind off that pain, boy?" And he, <laughs> and he and he, want, he takes his finger and acts like he's about to twist his finger. That's what I think. Yeah, of with with the twitch. So twitch it like. Every horse person that does any vet work or any type of whatever has twitched a horse. It's not like a bad thing. It's not abuse. People might look at it and think that this is mean. She doesn't care. We do it on horses that aren't sedated. Like we do it for a lot of things. It, it releases endorphins when you twist and pinch this lip. Pinch your own lip and tell me how bad that hurts. It's not hurting them, but it gives them something else to think about. It gives them kind of, you see how she's like twitching her nose. Like she's thinking about this rather than that. And, uh, and also, Another thing that I like to do is just kind of tap on their forehead, give them something else to think about. So we only really do it um, on the horses that either haven't had a lot of vet work done and like are nervous or whatever to kind of distract them and hopefully release a little endorphin. But a lot of the mares that have done this, been there, done that, don't need it and don't even need sedation. So She's being so good right now. He's gonna check her first. See that her follicle's still there, how big it is. So she's got two. Got on one. the same ovary? Yeah, she's got. Is that one. wrist twins? If she, if she ovulates both of them. So she has one that's a 4-2, and she has another one that actually looks more healthy than it's the smaller. big one does, but it's smaller. It's got a nice rim around it. It may be the actual one that ovulates. It's a three, so we mm. need to watch both those. And that looks more mature. The, the top one is a little irregular. There's no rim around it. And the bottom one is has a rim around it. The fluid's really black. I don't know. I'm, we just need to watch both of them. Been hanging around since last week when we, you know, we're checking her. We're getting ready. You know, we're trying to make a decision whether to breed her or not. And that may have kind of become mature and then kind of gotten the signal to go away. Mm -hmm. And then the smaller one maybe since we gave her that shot mm -hmm. yesterday to get her to ovulate, it may be becoming mature and that may be the one that's gonna ovulate. So, so we need to watch it. So would you do that second breeding tomorrow and then? If she ovulates overnight, then no, there's no need. Oh, my husband just texted me that I need to go ahead and make a Facebook group for my, for my birthday fish fry this year to get ahead of the game. So gotta put it on your calendar. Okay. You may need to twitch again. Before she gets too upset, let me just twitch her. 
Yeah. And she's very, that's the thing, is she's such a good girl in every other aspect. She just has such anxiety over well, that, shots and. That's what's hard about when the babies get sick or have a problem. You mess with them and they're young and they don't like it and it, it just never, those bad experiences yeah. never really go away. Cause she, I think she had surgery at a year and then we had to hand walk her, but because she was so cooped up, we had to sedate her a ton to be able to go hand walk her because she was nuts from being kept up. And it was like freezing, you know. Yeah, they have very good memories. I mean, I don't blame the poor girl for having anxiety over it. But now she'll get, just get to chill out and have babies, romp around in the field with her friends and oh she um yeah, she's amazing so so she's little well her hymen's intact too oh so that's tearing down so it's uncomfortable starting the breeding process we're going to breed her today and then we're going to check her tomorrow to see that she ovulates and if she hasn't ovulated by tomorrow we do have a second dose to use um and then We'll keep checking her to make sure she ovulates in a timely manner. She's in really good heat. Good. I was looking at videos. She and Petey were identical at this at, at his age because she wasn't really roaned out yet. They look <clears throat> so similar. What time are you thinking tomorrow? Because we'd be checking um, Cool and her. And then the other mares that didn't have much going on, would you just wait? I mean, if we're checking them, let's just check them. If, they're, if, they, if I had any inclination that they were coming in heat. Because then if we could order it Friday and breed this weekend, right. that would be great. I mean, I'd rather be a little more aggressive about checking them than, right. than miss one before the weekend. Yeah. She's a little over 15 hands right now, which is right about what I thought. Like, from... When they're younger and you're feeding them, that's what really gets them that growth. And when they have injuries, you don't want them to grow too fast because that can cause more damage. So we were instructed, like, oh, just keep her on hay. Like, don't give her a whole lot of grain and stuff. So, so we're going to let Ginger wake up for a little bit. You do not want to let a horse go back and start eating when they're still sedated because they cannot swallow very well when they're sedated. And then that can lead to choking. And horses do not have the ability to vomit. So... Choking is a very serious thing with horses, so we just avoid it at all costs. So she's gonna stay in here away from hay and things like that until she wakes up for probably another 30 minutes. Um, so kind of a little uh, wrap, wrap up of what happened today before we check her tomorrow. So we bred her. She had two follicles that were mature on the same ovary. So what that means is if she ovulates both of them, that could lead to a twin pregnancy, and we do not want that. Uh, twin pregnancies are just not healthy for horses while every now and then you'll see a healthy twin pregnancy it is very rare and it's very dangerous and so we as you know responsible ethical breeders if we know that a mare is pregnant with twins we do not let it continue and what we will do is pinch the smaller less healthy embryo um, and leave hopefully hopefully it leaves it the larger healthier embryo to continue in the pregnancy and so we will keep a very close eye on that if she is pregnant. Um, so what we'll do, we'll let her wake up and then tomorrow the vet's coming back and we will check to make sure that she ovulated. And if she did, then we will check her again in about 15 days and see that she has an embryo. And that is when we will see that she, if she has one or two and make the decision of what we are gonna do from there. So um, usually, I mean, this happens all, all the time and often it's just one. So it's very rare that it's two, but I'm just giving you the scenarios that could possibly happen. Um, so yeah, we will kind of keep an eye on that and I'll see you tomorrow, which will be in about two seconds for you. She's doing everything she can to try to hang tight for cool. Really? I mean, she's not building a dominant follicle. So, I mean, I'm not going to mess with her. We'll just no, we'll just kind of let out. it happen. Maybe next week. Okay. We'll be the week. Well, both those other mares, too, you know, they weren't really progressing super fast. So maybe we'll all, we'll be doing all of them kind of next week. And So I measure her biggest one as like a 2.6. Okay. Cool as a 2.2. Two. 
so not too far apart. So she has like a 2.6 follicle right now, which is a little bit bigger than Cool's. And we're about to check Trudy and Erlene and see how big theirs are. Um, but right now, with how everything's going, she could be possibly used for any of them because they're all kind of hanging out in the same spot. I probably need to start talking to you instead of my phone. So Trudy, we cultured her, and she had a little bit of growth on the really? culture plate. So we, so we need to plate flush in. her? We might. We'll see what she, she is. We may want to put um, a bag of fluid with some antibiotics in it. I'm thinking from her from now on, regardless, let's flush her. Because this has happened twice now where she's had something post-baby, and then she didn't get pregnant. Right. So I'm thinking in years future, she just is like a, just clean her out okay. regardless. They just sent me the picture of the culture. Is you that a, a couple. Lot? It's not a lot, but you can see where our line is, and the bacterial colonies are on the line. And you got a couple different, you know, colonies. You want to show him? Which represents different bacteria. So you have these little white colonies, which may just be a, a normal flora, which mm -hmm. is kind of what a normal flora looks like. Then you have this, which is eating the blood. Mm -hmm. The blood's gone. A lot of times that's a strep. Okay. So what we may do is just wash her with a Naxel. Okay. Which has, it kills the strep bacteria pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm thinking, Trudy, let's just, like, always flush her regardless after her babies before we breed her, just to, like, keep her clean. Because that's okay. that's been a trend with her. So right. she's a little sleepy. So we got to let her wake up for a minute before we turn her out. Come on, sweet girl. So Erlene, I wouldn't mind if we got an embryo from her and put it into Indy. Um, I'm kind of thinking I'd just go ahead and breed her twice. I don't know that I would leave her open for the year, but we're just going to kind of see who is timed best with Indy instead of trying to make it happen. So she ovulated last weekend, right? Yeah. So we're trying to time her up to bring her back around, and we want to short cycle her? Uh, if you think, yeah, I mean, yeah. So we checked her on Tuesday and she had ovulated. So let's just assume she ovulated Tuesday morning. So it takes five days to respond to a shot. So if we gave it to her today. That's too soon. Okay. So we, let's just say she ovulated on, we checked her on Tuesday. Let's say she ovulated okay. on Tuesday. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. Really next week would be. The earliest to give her a. Yeah, Sunday or Monday. And give her Lutalize or give her. Yeah, but I don't like to give it on Sunday or Monday because it puts them on. An off day. Yeah, a day you can't get semen, which is the worst. Sunday's the right. worst day, and usually it takes about seven days. Okay. So probably what I do is leave her alone and just check her middle of next week. Okay. And then give her a shot for the following week. Okay. Does that make That'll sense? That'll work. That'll work. This dog is stuck back here. Lucy! She's got a cat. Hey, girl. I, I think Lucy has a cat trap. Lucy! Is it, is it a cat? She, she got a, I don't know, but she was stuck behind the trash can. Oh, because the cat can get underneath here, oh. but she can't. Me. I tell you what, I can just tie her right here in Gracie's. Yeah, because Gracie's not coming in. Come on, big mama. <laughs> So, Erlene is standing right next to her half-sister, Penelope. Penelope and Erlene have the same dad, so that's kind of funny. All right, little one. Don't be crazy. Do you mind playing a little, or do you want to give her a shot in here? Yeah, I'll give her a shot in here. Hi, Mama. You'll never believe this. She's chock full of manure. She, that's like her MO. Yeah, she does a good job of that. Are you full of Oops. She's got a nice fog on her left, Avery. How big? Let me see. Three seven. Oh, wow. So we need to breed her like soon. Yeah, I'd get semen tomorrow. Okay. Well, she can. She can carry it then if that's if she's not synced up with someone. I don't want to waste time. So we need counter to counter tomorrow. Well, let's just, let me look and see what her edema looks like and see what this other. She's all jammed up in here. 
And Indy's way too far behind to bring her in. Yeah, no. That ain't gonna work. That's okay. Because I've got, I mean, if she holds up for cool, that'd be awesome. But also, I don't mind doing it with Erlene, so. Try to make some more room in here. She's got so much manure still, or I can't get out to that right horn. Are we going to flush her today? Yeah. yeah. I mean, so the options are, are to flush her and send that plate to the lab and just hold on the cycle or flush, breed flush. What, do you, what would you do? It doesn't, I mean, that one, all those little colonies mainly look like a contaminant except for that one. And it's, it's, um, the one is, is real, so I would flush for sure. Yeah. And then, you know, if it looks like a good cycle, go ahead and breed her and yeah. flush afterwards. Yeah, let's do that. So will you be able to tell today if Ginger ovulated both? Because she had two follicles? That's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I should. So, and that doesn't mean both will take. If she ovulated, correct. Both. But if they do, what are the percentages? Like, what's the odds of a successful pinching? Um, so if she has twins, we have right. to reduce one. Right. I'd say probably seventy-five percent of the time. Okay. Maybe a little bit more. You end up with one viable. Okay. But every, you know, when you remove one, you, you have a little fluid and inflammation in the uterus, so the other one's at risk for. Right. So really, it's like a three-four. No, I got so, everything laid out. So we out. probably could have two days? Yeah, so I would order tomorrow and breed on Saturday. So just do a normal FedEx? Mm-hmm. Okay. And it would be, did you say Dr. Raina? Uh, Dr. Amanda. Okay. Yeah. That, that's good. Because, I mean, I guess I can't have Dr. Matthew all the time. Mm -hmm. He's got to have an actual life sometimes. <laughs> Pretzel is going to have to come live at my house for a month. Is Macy going to be okay with that? Ask her his stud fee. Yeah. Ask Nathan his stud fee? Oh, no. Are Not Nathan's stud fee. No. I was telling yeah, him the, to ask his wife oh. the donkey's stud fee. I thought you were talking to me. To, to stay at my house for 30 days. Oh. Because she loves them things. Now, but here's the thing. She might have something there because my friend Shana wants to breed her donkey, Elvira. So Elvira and Buck. Elvira could come to your house. Yeah. Just be pimping out these donkeys. <laughs> Do y'all go to Mule Day? I don't. I haven't ever been. You should go. Do you ever go? I have been. Uh -huh. Yes, it's awesome. Now, now, Blanche has shown up Mule Day. So. Yeah, if you want to talk about donkeys and mules, that's the place to go. Yeah, Blanche has shown up Mule Day. That's why she's so halter broken. You may consider uh -huh. be aggressive, but come back tomorrow and um, let Dr. Amanda come over and do one more wash and okay. with an antibiotic. And um, that way you, you and give her some oxytocin, and that way you'll be set up to breed on Saturday. Okay. Breed on Saturday, and then Sunday have her come after and she breeds. And see if she ovulated. Check for ovulation. And... Um, Flush her again. Flush one more time. So we're treating and breeding at the same time. Okay. I mean, yeah, I want a successful pregnancy, so. I'll talk to her and get her queued up. Let's do that. So this has a gram of antibiotic in it. Mm hmm All right. So I blew up the cuff. It's going in. We're going to let it sit for a little bit, and we're going to pull it back out. Let that antibiotic have some contact time in there. So it's the same as what we did with the embryo transfer, except that we're not worried about catching the embryo. Right, right. So there are no other barns with this many mares that you'll do like in-house? There's, there's barns around, but I try to bring them all into the hospital. Oh. Because I, I can't, it's hard for me to bounce from place to place and get them all done. Matt Polovich tricked me. He's like, she's just got one mare. She's, she's, and it's real easy. She's Beyonce. She, she gets in full every time. He's like, I'm not even sure I put it in the uterus, and she's still got it full. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I'm in. I'll do that. And the next thing I know, we got six. <laughs> I think this year it's seven. Seven. <laughs> See, that's why he pawned it off on you, because I was getting more mares. He saw it coming and did not, did not tell me about it. Yeah. I, well, we're topped out. We have no more 
polling stalls. <laughs> so put her out now and bring her in, and then sometime this evening. Give her again? Yeah. And okay. I'll just get her to push the rest of that fluid out. Okay. And then we'll do ginger. And ginger <laughs> is the last one for the day. Is she ready to go in her stall? Yeah, yeah. Might. How long have you been standing Cool Breeze? Three years? Maybe four or five. Four or five? Yeah. And now the moment of truth, we're going to find out if Miss Ginger ovulated. So she double ovulated. She double ovulated? Yeah. All right. We'll leave her here for a minute and wake up. Um, two weeks from tomorrow. Okay. And we, we do not need to miss that day. Yeah, if because you got to. You got go to gotta do something. Yeah. Now, she'd have to come into the clinic. No, we can do it here. You can do it here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what do you do? How do you do that? Um, you sedate them, you separate the two, and you isolate one, and preferably the one that's smaller, and reduce it, and leave one behind. Huh. It's wild. To wrap all this up, we checked... Um, all five mares today, we bred ginger yesterday, and it looks like she double ovulated today, meaning both of the follicles she had, she ovulated, but that does not mean that both were inseminated. So we will have to check her in two weeks to make sure that she only has one, I guess at that, at that point it's an embryo, so one embryo. If she has two and she has a twin pregnancy, what we will have to do is um, reduce one of the twins and we can make a whole video on how that is done and whatnot. And I've honestly never had to do it, so I'm interested to learn as well. As far as all the other mares, so Ginger's right here. That's the one that we just did and you know, hopefully she's pregnant with just one baby. We also checked Trudy and she's getting bred this weekend. So today is Thursday, she'll be getting bred Saturday. And then we checked Erlene and Indy and Cool, and all of them are kind of on track to be bred next week. So hopefully we can sync up Indy with one of those two to use as a recipient mare and get, you know, two of Erlene babies or two of Cool babies. So hope that all made sense. Let me know if you have any questions before you leave. Be sure to subscribe and like and comment. It helps me out so much. And check out my new merch drop we just did this week. Um, there's a ton of new products of PD and um, just about everybody. We didn't have any PD products before, so now he's got a bunch of stuff. So check that out at www.katievanslyke.net shop. And I'll see you in the next one.